In the next two videos, we're going to go over the process of creating a simple object in 3D Coats Sculpt Workspace and replicating that along the span of another model. So what we're going to try and cover here is not only creating a scale that you can replicate anywhere on the model, but also creating a brush alpha from that. We are going to look at using it with the curves tool. We'll also look at using it with the primitives tool where we can quickly place and use our brush size and also the surface orientation of a brush to quickly place an object like this and scale it on the fly, making individual instances, but doing it relatively quickly. So let's go ahead and get started now by creating a new blank layer. Let's increase the resolution and I'll hide that scale layer. We'll just create our own. Now let's click on the primitives tool. I could use the default primitives or maybe a freeform deformation primitive, but let me show you, for example, if I want to use a cube or something, you can see with the default, you only have a handful of presets here. Whereas if I were to leave the primitives tool active and then come to my models palette, think of your models palette as an extension of your primitives list because 3D Coat will use whatever model you pick as a freeform deformation object. Okay, so let's choose kind of a rounded rectangle. You can see now here in the tool options panel, I can set the number of control points arbitrarily. I don't have this option with the default presets. Let's go ahead and enter four by three by four. Okay, and let's hide everything else temporarily by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and clicking the visibility icon. That will isolate the selected layer. Now, I could hit the E key and choose a freeform lasso and just lasso select all these points and I'll get a gizmo to scale it, but I could also just check transform lattice toggle. And what this is gonna do is it's temporarily just gonna give me a standard transform gizmo to make standard transform edits. So I'll squash this object vertically. And now I can go back to my freeform lattice by unchecking this. And let's go to the navigation bar and click on our axis handle so we can see which one we're operating on. I want to select these points and let's take a look at another reference image. I'll zoom in and we can see we need to create more of a rectangular shape than a square shape. So let's go ahead and pull that out. But before I do, I need to go back to tool options and let's check X axis for symmetry. All right. Actually, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to change the number of control points along the x-axis. I'm going to change it to 5. And that way I've got a little bit more control. And also, I probably don't need uh, three control points vertically on the y-axis, so let's go to 2. That's good. And so, yeah. Let's go ahead and select these again. And we'll just make a kind of a rectangle. Now let's move it in the y-axis I think it'll be fine so the next thing I want to do is go ahead and hit apply or the enter key and that's going to commit this preview object to a layer and this preview object will stay put in the viewport until I choose another tool. So I want to mention quickly though as you're working if you hit apply or the enter key and you get nothing and you see no polygons listed here at the very bottom under current object triangles then what probably happened is you may accidentally be on a layer that's hidden and another option might be that your mode here is in subtract as opposed to add. So just keep that in mind. Let's hit apply. And so we're about a million and a half polygons. That's okay. So let's go ahead and step out. Let's go to the view menu and let's check wireframe. I have to zoom in to actually see it. So yeah, it's a little bit more dense than I might like. And that's okay uh, for sculpting, but when we want to smooth, oftentimes you want to start with a lower resolution because when you click Smooth All, uh, a lot of these uh, hard edges or these facets don't smooth out. Okay, so let me turn wireframe off with my hotkey. 
And what I want to polish, especially if I'm in voxel mode, this is a quick little tip here that I think you'll find quite helpful. And that is, if you use this third brush alpha, it acts as a polishing brush when you hold the shift key to smooth. Let me choose a different shader. Okay, maybe something a bit like that. All right. So yeah, I'll hold the shift key. And it pretty much polishes rather than being quite destructive as a smoothing option. And it works just as well in surface mode for the purposes of polishing. So let's go ahead and hit smooth all a few times though and uh, we'll try and let 3D Coat do much of this for us. So for our purposes, the voxel sculpting brushes are more than adequate, but I like using the surface mode brushes. And um, yeah, so let's go with build up. I'll change my brush alpha to something a bit softer. And we probably want to lift one side up higher than the other. Let's use a draw brush and I can invert the tool. Let's use a different brush alpha, it's a little bit sharper. I'll bring my fall off up. Switch to the pinch brush. A quick tip about the pinch brush is that if we right click and drag all the way down till our profile is flat, that means we have a depth value of zero. And when you use the pinch brush at a value of zero, all it's going to do is just as the name implies, it's just going to pinch. Sometimes that's all you want. But now when you're working in certain areas like on a human face, around the lips, around the nose, uh, around the eyelids and things of that sort, you may want to either create an outward crease or an indentation as you're pinching. The default action is actually to create an indentation. So the harder I press, you can see it created a sharp uh, inward crease there. If I hold down the control key and then brush, you can see it's creating an outward crease. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that if you want to pinch, make sure your depth value is at zero. So I can create a little bit of pinching just to add a little bit of randomness here. All right. So let me hit the space bar and I'm going to select the move tool. Change my brush alpha. I want to really exaggerate this scale. And the reason is when I use this object for brush alpha, the more exaggerated it is, the better result I get when I'm trying to use it as a brush. If I leave it just kind of faint, like I might see here, then uh, it's not going to be nearly as um, dramatic. It's going to be a little bit hard to replicate this scale if there's not much depth to it. So again, just be a little bit on the, uh, you want to exaggerate a little bit on the scale. Okay, so And 
also with move, I can hold the control key and when I press in, it's going to press in along the normals as opposed to moving in screen space. Let's choose expand brush. We can expand it toward the rear. That's cool. All right, so I think we're done on that. Let's double click and name this layer. Scale nine. And 3D Coat's gonna adopt this layer name whenever I drag this into the model's palette. So what you probably want to do is create a new project or category folder. So for example, maybe reptile scale or skin, something of that sort. In this instance, I already have one for dragon elements, so yeah, I can just come to the right-hand side of the layer. When I see the little move icon, just click and drag that right into the model's palette. And I'll get a decimation dialog, which will allow me to reduce the overall poly count. Now, what I might do is I can keep one version a little bit on the high poly side, and that may be what I want to do for creating a brush alpha. And then I'm going to create another one that I can use for the primness tool or for the curves tool, which I need to keep the poly count rather low for those. So let's go ahead and go with what we've got here. We're still reducing it quite a bit, but when decimated, 100,000 should be plenty uh, for our overall purposes here. And you can see our thumbnail was created for it. I'm going to double click, I'm going to name this one low, so that when I'm looking in the folder or browsing my thumbnails here, I can see that this next one is going to be much lower in poly count. So I'll drag that in, and this time let's reduce that down to about 10,000, 15,000, somewhere in there. Right, okay. So I can hide that. I'll just go ahead and cache it. That way, 3D Coat creates a much lower resolution version, and it stores the original on the hard disk, and that way it keeps my overall RAM consumption down. All right. So now we want to use this model to create a brush. So what I want to do is go to the Alphas palette at the very bottom. So let's click New, Open Texture File. We want to navigate to the Documents directory, 3D Coat, Vox Stamps, and if we're wanting to find something in the splines palette for the curves tool, we would look in here. Objects is going to be your models palette. And if you have a subdirectory, which we do for the dragon elements, it's going to be in here. So, yeah, let's look at our scale. And rather than clicking on a preview, we want to actually click the OBJ file. And we'll see this little preview panel. Now, obviously, it's oriented in this panel the wrong way, so let's click Y. We can see it's oriented correctly. Let's add more resolution so it scales up. And if I want to rotate, I can do that. And I can use this depth clipping plane here. And this might be helpful for creating multiple brush alphas if you want. And because 3D Coat uses a circular brush, we want to be careful that we don't push this so far out to the edges that it gets clipped off on the corners here. Right, so we can click our little plus or minus icons to zoom in and out. You can also do that here uh, in this space, just like you would navigate here in the 3D viewport. So you can click out in space if you want and drag and move that about. I'll reorient it. Yeah, so let's go counterclockwise. And you can also right click out in this open space as well. And then we'll hit create. So we can see how it works here. And uh, let's give it a try. With the body layer selected, 
can choose a brush. Let's try Absolute. And let's change our depth value. Bring our fall off way down. And I'll try paint with dabs. There we go. So let me switch to a different brush here. This one seems to work a bit better. If you need to change the orientation of the brush where the, the higher point of the scale is toward the end, let me undo. I can go to my brush options panel. I can change the brush rotation numerically. So let's go 180. There we go. 